The following podcast was recorded on Wednesday, December 8th, 2021, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Hamler directly at gus.hamler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish of Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our presenter, Jim Bianco of Bianco of Research. Jim, thanks for joining us today. We're gonna to talk about how it's been another bad year for stock pickers. Stock pickers have suffered the last decade or more, even Warren Buffett. What's driving this? Yeah, so let's start off with that statement as well too, if we look at the first slide. This comes from the S&P, uh, index versus active manager survey. So they survey a bunch of active managers and they publish statistics on what percentage of them have uh, underperformed. So they look at it in the negative, underperformed their index. And I pulled out the, ta uh, the chart for the last 10 years. And it's pretty consistent that about 80% of them underperform over the last 10 years. Now, we know that active managers tend to underperform the index, but it's more around, it used to historically been more around 50%. So 50% would beat, 50% would underperform, and it's kind of a random walk as to which ones do better or worse. But it's gotten progressively worse over the last decade as active managers have been really struggling. And if you go to the next slide, you know, it isn't just your, um, you know, or, it, the question becomes in the next slide is, what is driving it? So this looks at the average correlation of a stock in the S&P 500 to the index. So you take all 500 stocks, We I used a 50-day correlation. So I say, what is the correlation of Tesla to the S&P index over the previous 50 days? And Apple and Google and Microsoft and GM and Ford and all the way down the line, all 500 stocks, and then they average all 500 of them. And it's 0.48 right now, 0.47. That's the long-term average, the red line that you see on the chart, and that's the latest reading um, as well. Uh, the green line on the chart shows you what the average has been since 2009. It's been 0.65. So let me restate that for you. If you buy a stock, ran some random stock in the S&P 500, most likely, two thirds of the performance of your stock can be explained by whether or not the overall market is going up or going down. So if you buy a stock and you know, the S&P is going up, your, your stock will go up. And if you uh, buy it and it goes down, it's because the market has gone down. So really you're just playing the overall macro trend in the market. There's a purple line on the left on this chart, and that shows you 1991 to 2002, that was down at around 0 0.36, 0 0.37, roughly only about a third of the performance of that stock prior to 2002 could be determined by whether or not the market was going up or down. That was the golden era of stock pickers because two thirds of the performance of your stock was whatever your management did, your product did, your positioning did, all the things that make your company unique. But now that's really so dominated because of index funds and everything else, it's really only about one third. So if you go to the next slide, um, it's not just your random, well, there's a lot of random managers that aren't very good and they're underperforming consistently. And of course, there's always truth to that. Here's Warren Buffett. Here's Berkshire Hathaway stock <coughs> uh, ratio to the S&P 500. And that horizontal line shows you that Berkshire stock is back to 2001 levels. Restated, the last 20 years, Berkshire has underperformed the S&P 500. The last 20 years, you'd been better off in the S&P index fund, Spiders, than buying the fund that tracks arguably the greatest stock picker who has ever lived. There's a joke saying that, you know, only Warren Buffett could have made this mistake, underperformed for 20 years. If I 
tried or you tried or a mere mortal tried after two, three, four years, they would have fired us for underperformance. But Buffett's allowed to underperform for not only to underperform for 20 years, but still can be considered a great manager after underperforming for 20 years. And yeah, he, it's probably true that he is the greatest manager of all time, but I've I've likened this recent period to watching Michael Jordan at the end of his career with the Washington Wizards, a little bit slow, out of shape, not very good. And you're thinking back to the period of the, you know, of the Bulls uh, dynasty, and you're looking at this guy on the Wizards and going, man, this is just hard to watch. And that might be the case with uh, Warren Buffett. You know, there was a period where he was undoubtedly the greatest uh, living uh, money manager ever, but that period is not now. And that's what this chart is basically uh, showing from here. So can you tell us more about the macro forces? Yeah, so um, I think that the macro forces are being driven by uh, two, two big things right now. First of all, on the fundamental side, it is definitely the Federal Reserve, and it's definitely the influence of big macro things that are pushing into uh, the stock market. You know, whether the Fed is easing or tightening or doing quantitative easing or tapering or whatever their decisions happen to be. <laughs> the analogy I've used is it's almost like every company in the S&P 500 has the same chairman of the board, Jay Powell. Uh, now they all have different CEOs and they all have different board members and they all have different strategies, but they have a common link among them. And that is this overarching macro theme of the Federal Reserve in what they uh, wind up doing. Consequently, the other big macro force that's driving them is indexation. So, you know, the, the other joke I like to say is that for most of the public, when they say I'm going to in the stock market or out of the stock market, for them, it's only one instrument. It's the S&P index fund. It's either you get, you own it or you don't own it. And don't, don't, you know, confuse the issue with what is my opinion about financial stocks or healthcare stocks or consumer cyclicals or anything along those lines. Yeah, maybe I might get a little bit fancy and make some quips about Apple or Microsoft or Google or some of the FANG stocks as a differentiation. But basically, it's either in or out through an index fund. And so because of the driving force of the index fund, it also correlates all the stocks too. Either money pours in all 500 stocks or money comes out of all 500 stocks through the index funds. And 2021 was a great year for the S&P 500, but not so much for anything else. What can you tell us? Yeah. So if we look at the chart of the S&P 500, it looks like a very good year. And it was. It is. It's up more than 20% with about three weeks to go. Um, it's back flirting with its all-time high after a brief uh, sell-off that we had in the last week or two, uh, worrying about Omicron and, and the Fed retiring the word transitory. Um, so you'd say, okay, it's a great year for the stock market. Yes, it is. But if we go to the next chart, the more you deviate from just buy spiders and don't overthink this, the worse you get. So this chart here shows the second half of the year and the blue line shows you the S&P and the S&P is up around 7% for the year. And the orange line shows the Russell 2000, which is the small cap stock index. It's down nearly 7% for the year. That 14% spread between large cap and small cap stocks in less than six months is huge. So buy stocks, buy the S&P. Oh, well, what do you think about buying small cap stocks? Don't because you wind up doing worse. So if you jump to the next chart, uh, the next chart shows fund favorites. So this Morgan Stanley puts this one together. They look at the fund weighting. What are the 50 most overweighted stocks in actively managed funds? And they put together an index of this. And so uh, I measured against um, an equal weight of the Russell because this is an, uh, excuse me, of the S&P 500, an equal weight of the S&P 500 because the fund favorites are equal weighted too. The S&P 500 are up 4% in the second half of the year, and the fund favorites are down almost 15%. So again, don't overthink this. Just buy the S&P, 
But what about the stocks that all the analysts spent all their time talking to their portfolio managers about and carefully crafting their funds with and all, about all those popular stocks that they buy? Those are getting drilled. They're down 15% when the market is up four. And then the final chart, um, uh, or the next chart is, excuse me, the second to last chart is the uh, non-tech, uh, is technology stocks. And this is the non-profitable tech stocks. Now, I want to be clear, non-profitable means not unable to make a profit, but these are usually new companies that wind up starting off with P&L losses along the way because they're trying to grow. This is the ARC funds that everybody, the, the ARC favorites that everybody likes to look at. These stocks are getting crushed as well, too. Of course, a lot of these stocks tend to be in the, in the fund favorite 50 stock index, so there's a lot of overlap between those two. And then the final one, just to give um, uh, some love to uh, active managers, these are the most shorted stocks. Now you would hope that the most shorted stocks go down and that's exactly what they're doing. So the stocks that fund managers actively hate are underperforming as you should. But remember, I don't show it on this chart, but in the beginning of the year with the meme stock rally, this was a brutally painful strategy to be short the most popular stocks because they were just going straight up. But in the second half of the year, that has worked. So in conclusion, there is a very famous study that Fidelity did of their, of their individual fund, uh, uh, individual accounts in their brokerage operation. And they looked at the accounts that did uh, the best. So these people bought stocks or bought funds and they've outperformed everybody else. What was the common trait that they all had? And I'm not making this up. The common trait was a lot of them were dead. And the reason is, is that they bought broad-based measures of the stock market like an S&P 500 stock or, or fund or an S&P 500 ETF. And then they didn't touch it. Why didn't they touch it? Because they died. That's why they didn't touch it. And it turned out their performance was fantastic. It turned out that the more that you started to actively manage your fund, whether it was picking certain stocks or rotating in and out of the market based on market feelings, the worse and worse you did. And that's what we just saw. As far as professional fund managers, just buy the S&P 500 and be done with it. The more you start thinking about, well, maybe we should look at small cap stocks or, or, or we should be doing analysis based on our CFA as to what stocks we should own. Or we should be looking at, um, you know, uh, some up and coming growth stocks like non-profitable tech, the worse you did uh, as well. The simpler you left it, the better. And that's what we found with Fidelity. And that's what we're finding now. So you sum it up. This has not been another good year for active management. It's been a year that has worked very well for buy spiders and then you're done, check next year. And even Warren Buffett has been struggling in this environment because he's another famous stock picker. Well, Jim, thanks for your thoughts today and thank you everyone for joining us. As a reminder, Arbor Research and Trading is an institutional research and brokerage firm. Our two most prominent offerings are Bianco Research and Arbor Data Science. For any questions, please contact Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Have a great day, everyone.